Hello everybody, this is Shirley with Soul to We Begin Embroidery. Thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to do a project for Christmas. It is less than three months away and you know everybody's busy, busy, busy getting ready for Halloween and then here comes Thanksgiving. But Christmas is the biggest time of the year when you can do crafting uh, to sell, to give away, for fairs and all of those kinds of things and it's so many things that you can do for Christmas as gifts and gift ideas that I decided to do at least one today that I've been thinking about for a while. Now I love this type of fabric, uh, the buffalo um, blocks. You can get them small like this or you can get them bigger and I, they're very popular. You go into the stores and you're going to see so many different things that are for Christmas that are made out of this fabric. So I decided to do a kitchen towel. And I'll probably do at least a couple of them that I'll put up, maybe two, three at the most. But I did this one as a tester just to see what it's going to look like. Now these are really big towels to me. And I put the cute little ruffle and ribbon on the bottom and a snowman. But I have it folded so it's really big. And if you get the flower sack towels, they're even larger. So I decided to do this again a little bit different. I'm going to do a wider border or ruffle and make this a little bit shorter and put a beautiful design on it. So I'm going to show you step by step how it's done. Uh, of course, as you can see, you have to have fabric to do it with. And you need to have, in order to make the ruffles, which I'll show you how to do on the sewing machine, you need to have at least double the width of the towel. And you can see this is double. The towel is 16 inches, so this is 32 inches. And once I get it all ruffled, it's going to fit really nice. And then you can put a ribbon, you can put another piece of fabric for a border, you can sew it down, all kinds of things. And with this being fabric that has texture to it, the waffle, uh, you need to use either knock down stitches or you need to use the water soluble fabric uh, stabilizer to go on top so your design won't sink in. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all of that and how to do it. And hopefully you'll be able to do one for yourself. So follow along and let me show you exactly how it's going to be done. So I purchased a large piece of fabric so I have plenty uh, not sure how many tiles I'm going to make but when I saw this fabric I really fell in love with it and decided to get this is at least a yard maybe two yards um, I don't know exactly a yard and a half something like that that I purchased from Joanne a while back because I knew I wanted to do these tiles and the towels I got and it is 28 inches long and 16 inches wide which is pretty standard they have tiles that are, that are even larger and it is a kitchen towel it is 100% um, cotton so and it's the waffle design so it does have texture now, I was looking for some linen tiles to do, and I probably will do that on a different video. And I might end up just having to buy the linen and making the tiles, but if I do, I'll make a video on that. So, with that being said, as I mentioned, you have to get your ruler. And I always use one, and I have this nice hand on that makes it really easy to, to do. And because it is 16 inches, again, like I said, you get your fabric strip. Now, this is 7 inches here. 
the other one I think was four and that was not big enough for me so um, you get your material decide how wide you want your ruffle to be and then you cut it accordingly and like I said this is seven inches um, wide I guess that would be uh, seven inches vertical 32 inches horizontally so it is as you can see doubled this towel so once I get it hemmed and sewn then I'll show you how to do the ruffle now let me show you how I'm going to hem it now because some people like the raw edge look I don't um, that's a little bit too rustic for me so I am going to fold this all the way down and I'm using my with this particular pattern it's really good because you can use your checks for your line I'm going to fold that all the way down and then I'm going to fold it again so there's no raw edge at all and I'm going to iron that down and once I get it all folded and ironed down, then I'll take it over to the sewing machine and stitch it down. And you'll do the exact same thing for your corner after you do the ruffles. And once I get it all hemmed and everything, I'll show you that and then I'll show you how you go about getting your ruffles. Because you need to do all of that so you can put it on your towel. And once you have it on your towel and you have it sewn on your towel, then you, well for me, some people put the designs on first, some people do a second. I'm not going to put my embroidery design on my towel until after I get my ruffle on here. So we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to set up my iron, get it all ironed out, and then once I get that done, I'll show you how I'm going to go ahead and get it stitched on my sewing machine. So I, I am now at my at my baby, my SE 1900 Brother Machine, my very first embroidery machine, and it is a combo machine. It is a sewing and embroidery machine. The largest hoop size is a 5x7. So I think I have a 2x3, a 4x4, and a 5x7 hoop for this machine. And I know I have a 4x4 and a 5x7 magnetic hoop for this machine. And this is what I started um, using uh, when I very first started doing embroidery. And I made a lot of masks for COVID, sold a lot of masks. And then I've, I've also done a lot of different type of embroidery. I've done towels, napkins, uh, t-shirts. I even did the pocket on a pair of blue jeans. Um, just a lot of different things that I have actually done on this machine on my SE 1900. Now they have upgraded to a SE 2000 um, machine and I think they are phasing this one out. So if you can find one, uh, I would recommend you getting it because you probably could get it at a good price and it is an excellent machine especially when you're starting off with your embroidery and for me I um, decided to get well a lot of people were getting the PE 800 and the PE 700 which was strictly embroidery but when I got this machine they didn't have any of those available and so they had this one and for me, it worked out because even though I do have a single separate sewing machine, I have a Janome, uh, I don't have room for two machines. So I would have to have an embroidery machine and a sewing machine. Now, uh, when I get room, and hopefully that won't be too much longer, sometime next year, I'm hoping to be able to have all of my machines up, my SE 1900 and have it strictly for embroidery, my Janome strictly for sewing, and then my um, brother, no, my baby lock, celebrate surgery machine. 
And of course, that'll be strictly for surging. And then of course, my brother 1055X for um, embroidery as well. That's my hope, that's my plan. But right now, I'm doing a combo. So, with all of that being said, I'm sitting here at the sewing machine at my uh, SE 1900 and I'm going to go ahead and sew the seams and um, all the way around and this is my hem. Now the edge that I ironed to fold back, I'm not going to do that until I have completed um, the hemming and then do the ruffles and once I've completed the ruffling then I will sew this back and that will tack down the ruffling part so it doesn't come undone. Now let me go ahead and sew this uh, hem and once I get that sewn then I'll show you how to uh, do the ruffling for for this um, this project. Now I um, I have this little gadget on here because I have the worst time keeping a straight seam and I have it at a quarter of an inch and it worked a little bit. I did pretty good um, and this is my first seam. They recommend that you do at least two because when you're pulling it for the gathering, the ruffles, if it breaks, you're going to have to start all over. So if you have two rolls, if one breaks, you have the other one as a backup. So I'm going to move this and do uh, down like a half of an inch down. And that's the one I'm going to use to pull for the ruffles. And you see, I still have a nice length of ruffling left over, which is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead. Now I have my machine set at a width of 2.00 uh, millimeters. The length, which is the length of the stitches, is 3.5 millimeters. And my tension is at 4. So um, it seems to be working pretty good that way. And I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, uh, set it up, move this back, and uh, do a quarter of an inch, no, not a quarter, half of an inch, and make sure that I have that second row, and then I'll be able to pull it and form the ruffles. So that's how you do ruffles. And as you can see, uh, it's... Uh, it's ruffling just a little bit, so I'm following that white block, and I'm going all the way down to make sure that I get the second line, and once I get the second line, then I'll have enough in here. And you got to make sure you have some thread left, a tail, so you'll have something to pull. So I have two rows, and I have the tail. And on the front is um, the same thing. I have two rows and I can start pulling. So I'm going to pull the second. And as you can see, as I pull it, I'm ruffling the fabric. The fabric is gathering. And that's what you want to do. You want to gently pull the thread and pull the fabric at the same time to create the gathering, which is your ruffling. Now do it very gently so you don't break your thread. But even if you do break your thread, remember we have that top row that is our backup. And this is going to be, when I get it all done and straightened out, then I will definitely sew over this so you don't see any of that and all you see is the pretty ruffling and then fold that back hem it and then you'll have a pretty ruffle that you'll pin to your towel to fit and then your towel will have a ruffle on the tail and that's how it goes and like I said I wanted to have a longer one this time so I'm going to go ahead and finish gathering this fabric 
and then I'll move back over to my table and measure it to my towel to make sure that it fits correctly and I have it all neatly gathered where it's even and then I'll pin it bring it back over here to the sewing machine and sew it on there and that's the process well I'm done with the sewing machine part I have my ruffle on which is approximately five inches added on and the tile was initially 28 inches I cut off four inches I added five so now it's 29 inches I sewed the back of it on now normally I would have folded down but I stitched it up and so it won't ravel put my label my label the label back on uh, the care label and have it double stitch now I am going to put some ribbon on here so I would have folded this back over this hem back over the towel to cover it but since I'm going to put this beautiful Christmas ribbon on here and I haven't decided if this is going to be sewn on or use fabric adhesive for it. I'm thinking fabric adhesive instead of going through the sewing because if I sew it I'm going to have to change my thread and do two rolls of red which I don't want to do. So like I did with the other one, I think I'm just going to do fabric glue. I'm going to let that be the last step because I'm going to go ahead and put a beautiful Christmas design on it. And I have this one that is a Christmas tree and it looks like it's very intricate and that's the one I think that I'm going to put on this towel before I put the ribbon on. And I really don't have to put ribbon on since I have this seam right here, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put ribbon on. So I'm gonna go ahead and iron this in half so I can get my center, and then I'm going to fold this down so I can get the center. So I know exactly where I want to place my tree. Now my tree is pretty long, so I think I'm going to put it like this because I'm going to use my uh, 8x13 Mighty Hoop for this design because the design is like 11 something. So with that in mind, I should be able to do a pretty good job here with filling up the space. So that's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and get it hooped and we shall see how that's going to look. Well, I have my towel hooped and on the machine ready to go. I have my water soluble topper to go on here because of the waffle material is textured and I'm not going to do an emboss. Um, I'm not going to do any knockdown stitches. Then in order to keep the thread raised and, and the and not sinking into the design you always use water soluble if you're not going to do knockdown so I have my water soluble up here ready for the entire design and I have my numbers already programmed in it requires it requires 16 colors no 13 colors and I put up 10 so I am going to use some colors twice. Um, it should come out okay. I don't think it's going to be any problem. I have 34,760 stitches, 16 stops, and at 600 stitches per minute is 88 minutes, so it's, it's pretty intense. I don't think I'm going to speed it up any faster because of the water soluble topper. I don't want to tear it up. So if anything, I'll slow it down. I won't speed it up. 
and I think that is going to be it so I have everything ready to go and I have a, a exclamation mark on my wireless design wireless icon I'm going to check that I think it's just letting me know there's an update available which I'm aware of but I need to make sure before I do anything else so my machine is going to be okay so I will check this out and I'll be right back so I was correct uh, the red exclamation mark has now turned to blue uh, it's just a reminder that there is an update available and apparently I can do it wireless now which would be great but I'm going to go ahead and do this design first before I uh, embark on that so I'm going to go ahead and get started Well, here we have the finished product. I have the ribbon glued on, the ruffle, and the design, the beautiful Christmas tree. Um, as you know, it's a long towel, so I kind of have it folded so you can get a better view of what the whole thing looks like together, and you certainly could fold it as a presentation where it would be really pretty as a gift something along that line would be cute but the entire tile, as you can see, is, this is how it looks. This is the tree. This is the ruffle. Let me kind of do it like this where you can see the whole thing together. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see the whole thing together. And I think it turned out really nice. Really nice. So that is my... Christmas towel. Give it a try. I think you'll have fun. It's so many things that you can do. But the ruffle, the ribbon, the design is just another way of doing Christmas towels uh, or any kind of towel. A bath towel, um, guest bath, anything like that. You can double ruffles, all of that. So just think about a different way of decorating get you some pretty fabric and stitch it on to the bottom of a towel and um, hem it up and all of those kinds of things and see what you can come up with and some kind of pretty design that you can add to it that would make it really special as a gift now I did glue use fabric glue I'm using fabric glue to glue on the ribbon mainly because I didn't want to take the time to sew it on. I would not recommend you gluing the ribbon if you're going to sell this unless that is something that is indicated in your um, description or if you're gift gifting it to someone even though it does say that it is washable. I don't know how many washes you probably can get if you were to stick this in the washing machine and dryer and what have you with the glue, I would be a little concerned. Um, as for me, it's strictly decoration. It's not going to be something that I will use uh, as a towel to be used. It would certainly be something hanging or put in a, in a place where people can see and see how pretty it is. But anyway... And I did center this design, but if I was to do it again, I think I would bring the design a little bit further down 
and maybe put something, some kind of saying or something at the top. Uh, even though the it is centered, I just think that since it's such a long towel, that there's a lot of distance between the top and the bottom. And with that being said, it makes it a little difficult to hang, I think. I would have to figure out how I would hang this up in my kitchen or some place where you can see the entire thing. But that's the only thing that I would think about changing, especially if you're using any kind of tile that's big like this. Um, I do know that most people will center their design and um, fold it and have it look really nice and then it's up to that person to decide how they're going to display it. But anyway, just wanted to show you how to put together a really cute Christmas uh, kitchen towel. So thank you for watching. I do appreciate. Can you please give me a thumbs up? Subscribe if you have not already. Uh, plan to attend my Tuesday night wind down Tuesday live stream every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern uh, Daylight Time. And uh, notification, share. Membership is available. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Take care. Bye.